Yeah. 
Look at the snow as moisture from above. Um, today we have grand opening in January 2015, introducing Forget Me Not Flora at 311 North Broadway, St. John. Here up far, a par owner, floral designer. Featuring at this time holiday concerts, which will be delivered. So we're, I like to promote the businesses that are local. And uh, she has 8 inch concerts from 3050, 6.5 inch concerts, 2050, and 4.5 inch concerts for 1050. All good tax. Now, are there any? Uh, I was blessed to uh, be able to play for the, uh, the play at the school. Some of us were blessed. Many of us were blessed. Uh, we want to just praise our children, our youth, for our participating. And of course, it'll be on this afternoon again at three o'clock, two o'clock. And Brenna Martin. Uh, her dad is Vic Martin, who you probably all know. Uh, she's performing today at um, Martin Community College. Martin County Community College. Where, where, you know, Barton's pretty big. Where is she playing in the chapels in the finance building? Okay. On the organ, wherever that is. Uh, so she'll be performing today has a concert at three o'clock. I think she's doing well I'm sure she's doing her last her doctorate. So, yeah. isn't yeah. It? This is just her BS. Yes. This is just her BS? Uh, she's oh, a senior. oh okay I thought she did that last year. And that was her junior yeah. concert. Okay. Alright so uh Brenna Martin is performing at uh Barton Community College nice if some of us can support her. Anyone else? I thought it was a joy. I found myself um, skipping up the stairs and then the thought said, now it's going to stand in the good uh -huh. And I was so happy to be right up the stairs. A year ago I was down there. your servants, 
your children. You want to hear from us. Today we bring our request to you. We know that you see us, and you acknowledge us, and you know us. In praying, we admit that we need you. That you alone control all of creation. We want you to control our lives. Mm -hmm. So today we ask you to hear our prayers. Respond to our request. Let us know that you hold each one of us dearly in your hands. Make us faithful stewards in our benevolence to those in need. For those caught up in the despair of disasters and downturns in life. For those suffering physical or economic loss or loss of hope. Help us not to hide our faces from the sorrow of others. Help us to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. Help us to join with them through our support and comfort. Hold us close to the spirit of your Son, Jesus Christ. Eternal God, we just thank you for your moisture from above. We, we know that you remember us. We thank you for blessing us richly and abundantly. We ask your blessings, your mercy, your grace on each and every one of us here today. And those who would love to have been here today, we ask that you bless each and every one of us and our families and our friends and our communities. Bless all those who govern us, our president and the senate and the congress. And be with each and every one of them. Let them know that Jesus Christ is the way. Bless all leaders throughout the world, Lord. Let them know that Jesus Christ is the way. Move on the hearts and minds of the troubled people of ISIS, and people who go around doing destructive deeds. Change their hearts and minds. Let them see Jesus. Just bless our communities. Bless all those who work for us, service, the servicemen and women across the world. Be, be with them. Keep them safe. Bring them all back home safely to their families. Be with our police and fire and teachers and professors and all those who make our lives a little better. Bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Who taught us how to say our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please turn with me to hymn 397. And I think we will stick to the verses uh, 1, 2, and 5. 3, 5, 7. I need thee every hour.
two boxes that will be going to deserving, uh, needy young people somewhere, boys and girls. And I just thank you for your generosity. Recognizing that God has blessed you richly and you are now reaching out to others in the Lord, first of all, we want to give thanks and praise to those who sacrifice to get these boxes, these shoe boxes for those children in need. We want to ask that you bless them bountifully. Give to them as they have been able to give to these children. Multiply their blessings over and over. Father, we ask a blessing on these boxes that will be given out through Samaritan's Purse. We want to thank you for Franklin Graham. We want to thank you for Dr. Billy Graham and the entire uh, Billy Graham Evangelism Organization. We ask a blessing on each and every one of them. And we ask that you continue to bless them and keep them and preserve them. Then, Father, we ask that you bless the contents of these boxes. That they may be used uh, to the glory of God. We ask that each and every child who receives a box, one of these boxes, would be saved, would be a child of God, would be received into the kingdom of God. And each child would know that Jesus Christ is Lord. And these gifts come because of His love, His mercy, His grace. Bless the boxes, bless Marsha, she takes them to uh, Pratt and bless those who work diligently to make sure the boxes are distributed as needed. These are the blessings we ask in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I want to uh, turn to the book of Judges. Judges. Chapter 4, which is found on page 216 of the Pew Bibles, Judges. 216, uh, Judges chapter 4. And I want you to notice that uh, it says, Deborah judges Israel. Uh, Deborah is a woman, a very feisty woman. And uh, we're going to be talking a little more about that because... Not often do we get a chance to praise the work of women. You know, without women, the church wouldn't be what it is today. But we want to uh, read from the book of Judges. Listen to the word of God. And may the words of my lips, the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Won't you young ladies to listen carefully to this. And the people of Israel again, again, did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after King Ehud died. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who dwelt in Harosheth Hagoim, then the people of Israel cried to the Lord for help. For he had, for Jabin had nine hundred chariots of iron and oppressed the people of Israel cruelly for twenty years. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel at that time. She used to sit on the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the people of Israel came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, the son of Abinoam, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, gather your men at Mount Tabor, taking 10,000 from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. And I will draw Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the river Kishon, with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hands. Barak said to her, 
If you will go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road in which you are going will not lead to your glory. For the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. And Barak summoned Zebulun, the tribe of Zebulun, and the tribe of Naphtali to Kadesh. And 10,000 men, warriors, went out at his heels, and Deborah went out with him. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. Today I want to address your attention to we will win with the Lord on our side. The victory is ours when we have the Lord on our side. Today we're going to highlight a leader, a judge, a woman. She was like the Supreme Court. You're familiar with the Supreme Court, those nine uh, persons, male and female today. She was the Supreme Court of Israel. She judged. They were little judges, and then when they couldn't resolve whatever it was, finally got up to Deborah, and her word was, was it. But not only was she a judge, she was also a prophetess. And you know what a prophet asks or a prophet does? They sort of foretell. They say, nation, you're going wrong, or nation, you're doing right, keep on the right track. Foretell. And then they foretell. God speaks to the prophet or the prophetess and tells them something that's going to happen. And they're able to foretell it. Tell it to people. Now her name was Deborah, and she is the only female judge. The book of Judges has a lot of judges. And you, probably one of the most famous was Samson. Um, but here is Deborah. She is a female judge. And if you examine the word Deborah, you see, it really means in Hebrew, honeybee. So if you know a little Debbie around the corner or a uh, Deborah, you say, hi, honeybee. Uh, you'll be right on target. So Deborah means honeybee. We're also told in the Bible that she's called the wife of Lapidoth. Well, we're not sure if what they're trying to say is Lapidoth comes from the Hebrew word which means torch, or fire, or flame, or lightning. And we think what they're trying to say is that this woman was a fiery woman. Uh, they put it, she's the wife of Lapidoth, but we think what, she, what they're trying to say, not she's the wife of that, but she's a fiery woman, one of these uh, powerful women. We have lots of them out there today. She's also called a mother in Israel. And we're not sure if Mark was saying she was a birth mother of children, or just as they say that Elijah and Elisha are fathers, they're a father of Israel. They're not trying to say that Deborah is a mother of Israel. And they equate Deborah with Elijah and the Elisha. It was through Deborah that the Lord commanded Barak, and we've been hearing that name for the last six years or whatever, Barak, to lead an offensive against the opposing forces of the Canaanites. And the Canaanites were led by the mighty general Sisera. They had a king by the name of Jabin. Now, General Cesare had, what was the tanks of those days? Sherman tanks, big tanks, Bradley tanks. Uh, he had, uh, in those days, imagine this, he had chariots of iron. 
And if you look at those chariots of iron, I don't know if you've seen Ben Hur or any of the films, you know they have knives on the side of the wheels. And as the wheels turn, those knives turn, and they could go through a crowd and rip the legs off the soldiers on the other side. So here was Jabin. He was a Canaanite king. And remember, the Canaanites were tribal people. So were the Israelites. You're going to hear about Zebulun and Naphtali. They're different tribes living in, in that part of the world. And Jabin conquered the Israelites. How did he do it? The Bible tells us the Lord gave the Israelites into the hands of King Jabin. And so this King Jabin had 900 chariots of iron. And the Israelites had the Lord. Probably a few spares, probably a few uh, swords. So Jabin ruled them mightily, roughly for 20 long years. Now I want to say this. He oppressed them. Now all powerful nations, all superpowers, all super leaders work with their nation pretty hard to get to the top. And when they get there, something happens. Oh, we're the king of the rock. We're the superpower. Let's take it easy. Let's turn to other things other than the Lord. So these most powerful people turn from the Lord to do what is right in their own eyes. The Bible tells us in um, Judges 4.1, the Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord sold them, the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan. And after 20 years of living under the Canaanite oppression, the Bible tells us that the children of Israel cried out to the Lord for help. Now, if you look at the book of Judges, it's, it's a case of up and downs. That's a nice sine wave. They're oppressed. They turn to the Lord. The Lord gets them out of trouble. They turn to evil ways. Get back down, the Lord sells him. It's all oh, we're down here. Let's turn to the Lord. And it goes up and down and up and down throughout all of the book of, of Judges. You do well, the Lord blesses you. You do evil, the Lord slaps you on the back. Takes, takes care of you. As a nation, we've come out of WW1, then the Great Depression. And we came out of WW2 and up to the 50s, after the war, the Great War, Second World War, and maybe part of the 60s, we started into, we started, we started turning away from the war. Also in the 50s, and some of us remember our dads uh, putting on their best clothes on Sunday morning and grabbing mum by the arm and Bible in one arm and the kids on the other and they walk into church. They're all there and serving the Lord, praising the Lord. But something happened in the 60s and 70s. And now we're in the ages of, well, let's have LGBTs and let's do all of these things that are evil in the sight of the Lord. And we, like the Israelites, and every other superpower, and you know the superpowers, there was the Roman Empire, and they built, they were the superpower of the world, and then they turned to the same things we were turning to. The Italians, then the, the Portuguese, then the French, and then the last great empire I'm familiar with would be the British Empire, and they turned in my lifetime from serving the Lord. Today, the churches are empty. They brought in all the people they could find of a certain religion. They just went to Africa and brought all of them out. Went to India, brought all of them out they could find. Today, they're mosque full. They're 
Hindu temples are full. Their churches are empty. Thank God for American tourists. And uh, every time we go back, we go to St. Paul's Cathedral, and one or two of these places that were great places of worship. Today they're just museums. Because they have turned that was even on the side of the Lord and turned it over to other lesser religions. While we were climbing up the ladder, we agreed with the Lord. We served the Lord. We praised the Lord. While we were doing that, men were marrying women. Women were marrying men. Today we have other combinations. And I'm not a prophet, but I can tell you I've seen this with the Syrians, the Syrians, the Babylonians, uh, all of the, the Canaanites in the Bible. And I've seen when they've turned from the Lord, what happens. This is the last great empire we've turned from the Lord. Let's look at history. Let's look history. Because if we examine history, we will go exactly the same way as every other superpower has gone. In the book of Judges, Israel followed the Lord and she prospered. Israel did what was wrong in the sight of the Lord and the Lord sold them and got them defeated by people of lesser religions. But the Bible records for us few women in national leadership positions. Deborah was an exceptional woman. I think from the description, she was just a fiery person and a prophetess. She was the best person for the job, and God chose her to lead Israel. What, a, what an honor. My friends, God can choose anyone to lead God's people, young or old or man or woman. God's choice is God's choice. God doesn't look at our gender or God doesn't look at our age. God selects the best person for the job. And I want to say that all of us here are eligible for leadership in God's army. And if you're chosen as a leader, follow the Lord. Don't get too conceited. Don't get big-headed. If you're chosen as a leader, follow the Lord. Deborah and Barak, I haven't spoken much about Barak, but he was the general for the Israeli army. Uh, general over all the 12 tribes. And, you know, he could select 10,000 men from this tribe, 10,000 men from that tribe, and let's go to war. Uh, but our focus today is on Deborah, the judge and prophetess. She heard the Lord tell her to tell Barak, listen to Barak, gather two tribes together, 10,000 men, and go meet Sisera, the, uh, the commander, go meet Jabin, and uh, we, I will turn them in over to you. Because Israel at this time had turned back towards the Lord. As it turns out, if we, could, if we had time to read the whole story, uh, I could probably go ahead a little bit. Uh, when these 10,000 men met these 900 chariots of iron and this vast Canaanite army, the Lord turned their minds around in the Canaanite army and they weren't sure what was happening, and they ran away, and the Israelites just uh, took care of them. Not one was left alive. The Bible says, not one survived. They had all that firepower, and the Lord just turned their minds, and they started beating each other. And then the Israelites uh, killed each and every one of them. So if you're a leader, follow the Lord.
Barak and Deborah were successful because the Lord was in front of the army. The Lord went ahead. He said, now I want, I'll be here ahead of the army. I want Barak and Deborah, or Deborah and Barak, behind me. The thousands of Israelites behind them. And as they approach this massive army, can you imagine facing 900 tanks? The men over on the other side lost their minds. And they were defeated. <coughs> now, also, if you're a leader, don't if you're not a leader, don't compete with the leader. Compliment the leader. We're all here to compliment each other. We're all here to help our leaders. As in any good marriage, a husband and wife are in mutual submission. Now, we don't want to get to submission too much today, but. Uh, Husband and wife are in mutual submission. A good marriage has a husband and wife who think of each other's interests, who think of their children's interests. A good marriage consists of a husband and wife in mutual submission. The husband in submission to Jesus Christ, so is the wife. So if you're not a leader or you are a leader, submit yourself to Jesus Christ. If you're a leader or you're a follower, take initiative. Take initiative. Leaders are supposed to provide the overall vision and plan. Followers are to execute this vision and plan and to help with the vision, to help with the plan. When things are going right, they're there to help the leaders to press on. When things are not going right, they're there to say, you know, I think have you thought of this other idea? As Spike Lee would say, do the right thing. Do what's right. If you're a leader, you ought to be in prayer to the Lord. If you're a follower, pray for the leader. King Jebed and the Canaanite army had these 900 chariots of iron. Deborah and Barak had 10,000 men. Now, no doubt, they had a lot more men on their side than Deborah and Barak. Christian leaders today face the world and we face a whole lot of opposition. The leadership or the church, the opposition that the church faces is as formidable as the opposition that Deborah and Barak when you look at the opposition and all the tanks in front of you, you could just melt. But if you put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ, know that He is with you. Christian leaders today face the world, the flesh, and the devil. And we must stand up. We must stand side by side. We must pray for each other. We must work together. We must work together as a church, as the people of God, children of God. And if we continue to do that, no matter how overwhelming the odds are, we know. In fact, uh, one day we're going to read the final story in Revelation. We know that we are the winners. We know that we will win with the Lord on our own. Please turn with me in our hymnals. And let us look at hymn 883. Hymn 883. We can stand and repeat that together. Hymn 883. Statement of Faith of the United Church of Canada. 883, let us do that together. We're not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and has created, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make good, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God.
men facing those awesome weapons. And it says, we are not alone. No, they were not. The Lord was with them. Thank you. Now let us repeat our offering prayer together. Found in the bulletin. Together. Giver of gifts, you know the true value of the talents you bestow upon us. Open our eyes to see the possibilities that you hold for our world. Transform the gifts we offer today into signs of our commitment to bring light and love to every task we do. Transform our understanding of our potential that we may shine forth as children of light, as people of faith, and as bearers of hope through Christ our Lord, who loves and strengthens us. Amen.